Good morning. I'm Harvey from Hastings Bible Fellowship. We just finished 28 chapters in the book of Matthew, sharing on it on the broadcast. And uh, it's time for a test. So we're going to be sharing excerpts from the teaching. We'll be asking questions. See if you have uh, retained what we shared. And then asking the questions, we'll be giving you the answers. And I think you'll be enjoying that in the era of reviewing truth concerning the kingdom of God. After all, when you read the book of Matthew, you're reading about the life of the Lord Jesus Christ in terms of his proclamation of God's kingdom and how it should affect our lives as we obey him in faith. Thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the broadcast at Hastings Bible Fellowship. Today, we are uh, embarking upon some serious inquiry with respect to the first two words of Matthew 7, 1. Can you read uh, that, Mrs. Stacey? I can read. So uh, if you kind of think about this, uh, all of the uh, translations are going to be similar in here. And as we always do at Hastings Bible Fellowship, we encourage people to find a translation you like. But uh, you can look at the other translations, too, to kind of help you out. Because uh, there are an abundance of English translations out here. They all have something uh, useful to contribute to us. And uh, I'm an all-of-the-above uh, minister in terms of finding the truth of the Lord in the verse translations. Uh, because uh, the uh, scholars are kind of helping us out in discovering truth from our Savior because after all, uh, what we're reading here is in red. That means Jesus is talking. And of course, he was a native Aramaic speaker and the book of Matthew is translating it into uh, uh, the uh, language of uh, Greek. And so we got English translations on. So uh, uh, what is the first, well, three words in your translation? Um, of course, I'm reading from the Amplified. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, do not judge. All right, now, wait. We got to unpack that phrase right there. Because other translations uh, are similar in this. They basically say, don't judge. That's the Max Lucado uh, Heathen Bible. Uh, we call it Heathen Bible. It's actually the new uh, century version, you know. And then uh, you've got uh, our friend uh, who uh, uh, put together the uh, New Living Translation. Stop judging. Stop judging. Yeah. And, to a uh, halt. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the old school King James says, judge not. Okay. Now, do you have Webster's Dictionary. I do. All right. What we want to do, uh, the first off one here, is understand that uh, when Jesus uh, says uh, judge not or or stop judging or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, don't judge, you know, he's got something in mind. 
And uh, of course, uh, there are some things that the saints should be involved with in the area of judgment. So our Savior is not talking about that. We're going to find out about that right now. First of all, we got to understand that the word judge in the Bible is used as a noun. It's used as an intransitive verb. And it's used as a transitive verb. And so the meanings on here, we kind of need to understand before we even get going on here. And so therefore, if you're going to use the word judge as a noun, you're talking about a person who is a judge. Mm -hmm. And of course, Almighty God is the supreme judge. Mm -hmm. Right? And, uh, you know, you think about a judge in a court of law, you know. Judge Judy. <laughs> right? Judge Joe Brown. Judge Joe Brown. You know, the, the, those are, you know, the word judge is used there as a noun, you know, as a person. All right? Well, when we use the word judge as a, yeah, as a verb, the word judge can be used as an intransitive verb or a transitive verb. And if you use it as an intransitive verb, Webster's has this on this. The word judge, intransitive verb, to compare facts or ideas and perceive their agreement or disagreement and thus to distinguish truth from falsehood. And our Savior said in John 7, 24, judge not according to the appearance. Mm -hmm. So therefore what he's saying here is uh, don't judge by the way things look. That's an intransitive verb. Mm -hmm. All right. And then there's some other ways on this, but I just want you to get this uh, part of it. When we read Matthew 7, 1, the word judge there is to be considered a transitive verb. In other words, you are hearing and determining a case. You're examining you're making decisions on something. Specifically, you are deciding to pass severe sentence or to censure. And this is what our Savior is telling us not to do. For a specific reason, which we're going to be reading about. Now, that word censure is a, uh, it's an interesting word. We just had a senator a couple of senators who were censured by their party because of the way they were behaving and doing their jobs. Their party says, you will not be allowed, you'll lose your power. Yeah, so that's a censure situation. That's a censure. You, you, you'll lose the power of using us to help you raise money. So, when our Savior says... So that censure is talking about not just, uh, you know, blocking. It's a, it's a it's, it says to censor, censure rashly. In other words, we don't have all the facts. We're going to cut off your power. We don't even have no facts about what's going on. And so our Savior says, if you're going to be doing that, one day that's going to come it's back come on back to you. you also. So now we get to read. Matthew 7, 1. Now, I've got a, I got a bunch of uh, translations on here. I'm going to start with the uh, New Century Version, the Max Lucado uh, Bible here, the uh, Heathen Bible. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Don't judge other people or you will be judged. You will be judged in the same way that you judge others. And the amount you give to others will be given to you. What are we giving out? Judgment. We're talking about judgment. I know. I know. 
money. Let's see. See that? See the last there? This passage is parallel to Luke 6, 37 and 38, which tells us Luke 6, 37 and 6, 38 is not dealing with money at all. Did I say that out loud? Remember, also remember, this sermon is connected to the last book chapter we read, which is connected to the previous. What is Jesus talking about? Where's your heart? Where's your heart in dealing with what we go eat, what we not go eat, what we go, what we worry? Where's your heart? Yes, it. Where's your heart? What's your motive? What's my motivation? What is your motivation? Where is your heart leading you? Is your heart fixed on Jesus and it's His kingdom? kingdom. If it's not, you need to fix it then. You need to fix it. Repent, change your mind, acknowledge the King, the Lord Jesus, and serve Him. Serve Him. Period. Period. Now, so that's the Max Lucado version. All right, let's go over here to the New Living Translation. Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Here we go. Stop judging others, and you will not be judged. For others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. Look at that. Same measure you meet with all, judgment. should measure to you. Judgment, judgment, judgment. We are giving judgment. And in this case, the Lord says, don't give judgment to people because the same way you give judgment to people it will be measured back, back to, you. to you read your version the uh, make it loud version all right listen carefully personally if you have um you have a, a cell phone most people do download what is this app called what app the app for the bible Oh, you mean the, the the one we have here on this phone? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you can download that. Go to uh, the uh, places uh, where you download apps. You know, it's called Bible Gateway. Yeah, Bible Gateway. Download Bible Gateway. You got probably a choice of maybe fifty different translations of of, of uh, scripture in the English in the English language. They got Spanish. They got there's a Hebrew Bible for those of you who speak Hebrew. Not one of them. But get you one of these and then find you two or three that you can just back and forth just for your own edification and understanding to understand to get to get another slant outside. there you go just another slant on the on the because you know most of us grew up doing king james these vows not even the new king james yeah. something about when i read the king Woody's. james you know stuff like that it, it kind of stifles me. Maybe it's, it, maybe it's me. Sometimes it's just me. But when I read the King James, I read it, and it, 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 it's, it's not clear. I guess that's the word. It's just not clear in, in the, because that's not the way I speak. But when I got the, um, when, I, when I first heard about the ant, the ant five, five, when I started reading it, things started making sense for me because it, it, it gave me a color. It gave me a depth that I wasn't getting from reading just the King James. Again, just me. So that might help you. But verse 7 says, 7-1 seven says, Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority 
as though assuming the office of a judge. Wow, that's pretty good. So, this is not, he's saying do not do this that. kind of judging. Yeah, that kind of judging. See, that kind of judging there is the transitive verb element mm -hmm. of judging. We are not to do that kind of judgment. That's what Jesus is saying mm -hmm. because that will do what? What does it say here? Um, as well, so, so that you will be so you so you so that you will not be judged unfairly or in the same way you were just judging yeah. as being a self-righteous self-righteously superior you don't want to be judged like that no so don't you don't do that. you do that this is what jesus is teaching what he's saying yeah so now, now think this through jesus is making a covenant that if you judge in this manner it will come back on you yes it will so if you don't want to be uh judged uh uh unfairly and so forth then don't you judge unfairly okay yeah okay. verse two now this 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 word here hypocritically what is a hypocrite oh boy it's an actor playing a role an actor, an actor playing a role what does an actor do he puts on a costume or she puts on a costume and they put things to their face and maybe they wear a wig and they take on the mannerism of the character that they are playing. Maybe they're a young person, they gotta play an old person, so they 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 curl their back and they haggle their mouths and they get they get lines painted on them so they look like they're older than they are. A hypocrite is an actor playing a role. What yeah. does your say? Well, this is what Webster a hypocrite said. One who feigns to be what he is not. One who has the form of godliness without the power, or who assumes an appearance of piety and virtue when he is destitute of true religion. So, uh, that's yeah. what a hypocrite is there. And so... One who assumes a false appearance. Yes. Yeah. So, Mrs. Stokes is reading here in verse 2, mm -hmm. what's in the uh, bracket here, mm -hmm. the way she says, For just as you hypocritically judge others, See that? Hypocrite. In other words, you yourself are probably doing the thing you did with somebody else. You have the pretense of being all that. But you're not. But you're not. For just as you hypocritically judge others when you are sinful and unrepentant. Oh, not just sinful, but unrepentant of your sin. Do we sin? Yes. Do we stay in our sin and we don't repent of it? What do you do in judging somebody? In the wrong way. Yeah, what she said. Okay. When you <clears throat> try this again, but just as you hypocritically judge others, when you are sinful and unrepentant, so will you be judged. And in the accordance with your standard of judgment used to standard pass of measure. Your, your accordance with the standard of measure used to pass out judgment, judgment will be measured measure to, to you. you. Now you see how similar this is. What are we talking about? Judgment. judgment. You see how similar this is to uh, Luke uh, six thirty-seven and six thirty-eight. It's very similar to that, especially Luke six thirty-eight. Given shall be given unto you again. First time shall you run over shall men given to your bosom. Same measure me thought should be measured you again. It's the parallel passage. That's what, what we're uh, mm -hmm. talking about here. And in uh, both of them, we're dealing with uh, a, a Native Aramaic speaker who is mentioning what will happen if someone gives out unjust judgment. So you can give just judgment. That's, that's nothing wrong with that. 
But if you yourself, no, you 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 judging someone unjustly, you act with you have an attitude of self righteous superiority. You're hypocritical. You are sinful and unrepentant yourself. Nah, you ain't got no business judging nobody or nothing. Because it's going to come back it's on It's going to come to you. Yeah. So, so this feeds right into the third verse. Watch our Savior give this uh, out here. I'm going to read it from my version here, at least my version for the day, uh, the uh, New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. Verse 1 again. Stop judging others and you will not be judged. For others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? Come on. See, this is what he's talking about. Come on. Now, if you go to King James, it reads like this for all you old school saints here. Verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Ye. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured mm. to you again. Mm. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thine own eye. So you, you can see how this all lines up in Jesus' mind in terms of this Sermon on the Mount here. He's talking about, uh, listen, those of you that judge in a uh, way that uh, involves uh, self-righteous superiority and this sort of thing, it's going to come back on you. And so don't do it. So read your version, verse 3. Why do you look at the insignificant speck in your brother's eye? That is in your brother's eye. Mm -hmm. That is in your brother's eye. But do not notice and acknowledge the egregious log that is in your own eye. Why? So, yes, that's the Greek one. Why? Yeah. Why do you look at the insignificant speck? You know what a speck is? You, you, I, I have a... I have a uh, a navy blue top which means that if a piece of lint gets on here it's going to stick out like a sore thumb right a speck it's noticeable but I ain't going to change my outfit because there's a speck of lint on there in other words it ain't going to make me change my idea that I'm going to wear it because it's a speck not a bunch of specks a speck I'll either pick it off or get a brush and, you know, brush it off. A lint brush. A lint brush. Why do you look at the insignificant? Insignificant. In, in other words, it don't even matter. But you notice that. Because it's in your brother's eye. And you don't see it in your eye. But do not notice and acknowledge the egregious log that is in your own eye. So this feeds uh, the previous two get the there. Get the concept of what's going on here. You got a brother. He has a speck in your eye. You ever had a, you ever had like a piece of dirt or something in your eye? It's irritating, right? And you rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it to your eyes water and it comes out in a speck. This guy, see, he's saying here, Jesus is funny. Jesus, you got a whole log hanging out your eye. Not a stick, <laughs> a log hanging out your eye, and you don't even notice and acknowledge that you got this log in your eye. Mm. Jesus is quite the preacher, y'all. Yeah. He will paint a picture for you, and if you don't laugh, you'll say, Oh, me, oh, me. Understand what he's saying here. This is the wrong type of judgment. This is the judgment that he says, 
Don't do this. Don't do this. Because it's going to back, it's going to boomerang, boomerang back, to, back you to you in such a way that you're not going to like it at all. So it's going to boomerang. Okay. So, yeah. The speck in your eye, the log in your eye, the speck in your brother's eye, and the log in your eye. You don't even say nothing about it. Verse 5. Verse 4. Verse 4. How could you say to your brother, let me get the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? How can you clearly see what's in your brother's eye when you, you can't even see what's in your own eye? What right do you have to try to remove somebody else's imperfections and you walk around here with a log? I'm thinking Jesus is saying, deal with you. Deal with you. Before you start micromanaging somebody else's life, consider yourself. Judge yourself and repent. Hello? Yeah. Judge yourself. Repent. Acknowledge your sin and repent. Don't walk around here Un sinful and un and unrepentant. It's a danger. Yeah. It's a danger to who? It's a danger to the body. Yeah. Now, of course, all ministers have to deal with this because you know we're on broadcasts all over the world and on the social media, proclaiming truth to people, and of course we proclaim it sometimes like that, <laughs> and then you see them other fingers. Back. They're pointing this way, mm -hmm. right? That means that we only have one finger to point to you. And then we've got, what, four that point to us because <laughs> we have to live what we uh, are sharing mm -hmm. with you. Unless you use shark hands. Yeah, yeah, if you use shark hands, then you, you don't have all of that. But uh, th th the point is, we who share and labor in the word and doctrine, we have to live what we preach. Otherwise, we're hypocrites. Okay. And the Lord is saying this, and ministers, uh, you know, have to deal with this because in many things, uh, ministers offend all. That's what James said. And so what we share we're responsible to live on it. Right. Right. So, therefore, he, he says down here uh, in verse 4, uh, you know, how can we say to your brother, let me get the speck out of your eye when, you know, we got the same issue. So, therefore, you go to verse 5, and what's the first two words he says? You hypocrite. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not hypocrites. We live what we preach. Indeed. And therefore, look at verse 5. Okay. You hypocrite, play actor, pretender. First, get the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. All right. Now, now this reminds me of something uh, that we did uh, last week. You know, we shared... On stop the worry and anxiety. Remember uh -oh. that? Yep. All right. Now, there's no way we can share a message like that unless we've done it ourselves. That's why I tell stories. Therefore, Mrs. Stokes tells stories on how these principles have been worked out in our entirety of living here. And so, therefore, we have lived out Matthew 6, in terms of seeking first the kingdom of God, because uh, in uh, our lifetime of uh, serving Christ, uh, the opportunities to get involved with fear and worry has been multitudinous. Yes. And so uh, the Lord 
gets us uh, involved with uh, sharing this because we've been tempered in this area in terms of making sure that we serve God mm -hmm. and not man. So we are uh, humbly. So we, had, we had to deal with that log in our own eye. Yeah, deal with log in your own eye. Quit the worry. Shut thy mouth. Be still. And know your God. All right. I'm going to read this uh, in uh, my version on here. The uh, Max Lucado uh, New Century Version Scripture here. Okay. By Heathen Bible. Uh, in fact, I'll just sort of go back again uh, to verse 1. Uh, don't judge other people. Or you'll be judged. You'll be judged the same way that you judge others. And the amount you give to others. The amount of judgment. Thank you. You're welcome. Will be given to you. Why do you notice the little piece of dust in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the big piece of wood? in your own eye. Mm -hmm. How can you say to your friend, let me take that little piece of dust out of your eye? Look at yourself. You <laughs> still have that big piece of wood in your own eye. <laughs> How can we tell all of you to stop the word, stop the anxiety, if we haven't done it ourselves? We've made the declaration. Jesus is king. Jesus is high priest. Jesus is the great I am. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. Jesus is our great shepherd and bishop of our souls. And we serve him and not work. There you go. That was a choice. We had to make the choice and, and put our choice. foot down. And so therefore... We can tell you that yep. we had to do it too. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities for worry and did they know, stop? No, no, they're still there. They're still there. They they still show up. <laughs> yeah, but see, Jesus said, "Stop it." Yes, sir. Yeah, we serve Christ Jesus. We stop the worry, stop the fear. Mm -hmm. And whenever it shows up, we remind it. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. You have fear no and worry and uh, uh, get out of here. See that? We use our mouth. Yeah. Words. Yeah. It's spiritual weapons. More on that later. You hypocrite. Verse 5. First, take the wood out of your own eye. Mm -hmm. Then you will see clearly to take the dust out of your friend's eye. Next, this is the New Living Translation. Uh, you can probably figure out this one is kind of. It's been beat up, beat up and so forth, you know. <laughs> uh, this is the version that uh, we use to teach our own adult children that they're all adults. Okay. So that's why it's kind of. Yes. Yeah. But, our, our oldest is nearly 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Stop judging others and you will not be judged. For others will treat you as you treat them. Whatever measure you use in judging others, it will be used to measure how you are judged. Judgment. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye? When you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hello. Hypocrite. Mm. First get rid of the log from your own eye. 
then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Those are some principles there mm -hmm. from the Sermon on the Mount mm -hmm. that we are privileged to adopt in our own personal lives for one overriding reason. And you know what that reason is, right? Everybody say it together. Jesus is king. I didn't know the answer he did. I'm honestly not going to play that so, um, <laughs> the king, Jesus is king. lives yes. this way. <laughs> Why would Jesus proclaim? See, this is Sermon on the Mount. Sermon, he is preaching and teaching to people on a mountain. And he be the king sent to Israel. Thy king cometh unto thee. You know, he cometh unto thee. And so he is proclaiming, judge not. Be she be judged. With that unjust judgment. That unjust judgment there. Judge correctly. Judge correctly is, is what he's saying. That's all he's saying. Yeah. And so therefore, you are privileged to quit being so hypocritical and trying to order people around and tell them what to do when the same issue is with you. Let's just know that it is possible to do the works of Christ with bad motives. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you're going to be involved with uh, things of the Lord and uh, doing good works and, and uh, uh, casting out devils and things like that, and you've got bad motives, mm. That's some issues there. So we're going to kind of get into this today. So if you can start reading uh, in uh, Matthew 7, 21. Yeah. Kind of start, start there. Okay. Um, as you all know, by this time, I'm reading from the Amplified Make It Loud Bible. Okay. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, this is Jesus speaking, in case you were wondering, will enter the kingdom of heaven. That's pretty straightforward. But only he or she who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. All right, now. We know that not one believer can do the will of the Father without abiding in the vine. Jesus, the King. We know that, right? Right. Okay. So our Savior in this Sermon on the Mount is uh, kind of telling you that you got to do the will of the Father. The model for doing the will of the Father is Jesus Christ himself. There you go. Okay. All right. So he did the will of the Father by abiding with his Father. And he did that to the place to where he could say, I'm one with Father God. Okay. And therefore... He got the will of the Father done in terms of his mission, which was to die for the sins of the whole world. Now, our Savior gave the one new man the same mission he had. That mission was to proclaim the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God to every creature. Teach, preach, heal. 
Yes. Okay. So nobody can get involved with doing the will of my father unless you abide in Christ, right? Yeah. Okay, now, so with respect to that, to abide in Christ is to put yourself in position to do the will of the Father. In other words, it puts you in a position to demonstrate faith. In other words, obedience to the will of the Father is what we want. And therefore, we will be in a place to enter the kingdom of heaven. You know, to get involved with the body and the vine gives the Lord Jesus Christ the opportunity to fix our motives. To fix our attitudes. To fix I want to in the area of obeying the true vine. So I want you to take a look at this uh, front part of this one more time. Read it very slow. That's verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Okay. So the Lord has set this up. You do the will of Father God with correct motives. You're going to be demonstrating faith properly. And you're going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that what you want? That's what you want. Okay. Read the rest of it, verse 22. Okay. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them. Stop right there. A few weeks ago, we talked about the word judge. Judge not. We talked about judge as being a transitive verb and an intransitive verb. This judge is the judge where he says, I'm not judging based on what it looked like. I know your motive behind what you did. Jesus is that judge who you can't pull something over on that. I know your heart motive. I know if you, if I'm really your Lord, Lord. Say that one more time. That I deep. know whether or not I'm your Lord, Lord, or you're just using me to build your thing, your kingdom. Wow. Jesus knows the difference. And, and, and that's how he's judging. He's judging from what he knows about your and my motives. Wow. So, as usual... The Lord Jesus Christ, in this Sermon on the Mount that we've been dealing with, uh, one of the things of the kingdom of God that's critical is our motives in terms of uh, operating in them. And the Lord God knows all, is everywhere at once, and has all power. Those of you all that are involved with, uh, you know, uh, doing the will of God with bad motives, the Lord knows about it. Yes. And uh, I bet if uh, you uh, don't get involved with repenting, well, you're not going to be uh, entering the kingdom of heaven. You need to kind of... Uh, get that right. Now, of course, because these verses are here, there's going to be some people that's going to be experiencing what's uh, being written here. So, go on and read it. Okay. 
um, uh, 22 many will say to me on that day when I judge them, when I Lord, judge. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name mm. and done many miracles in your name? Mm. And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you depart from me. Okay. So. Now this is the judge. Jesus the judge is judging. And he is not doing it in a closet. He said he's going to do it out publicly. Okay. These people are saying, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And driven out demons in your name, and done many miracles in your name, and then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you depart from me. You are banished from my presence, who you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. All right. So what wait, you wait, can wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. what are his commands? Be in the line. The vine. The vine. The true vine. The true vine, which is Jesus. Is Jesus. All ministry effort that is completing the doing of the will of the Father comes out of abiding in the vine, the true vine, the King Jesus of Nature. Yeah. Only by abiding in the vine can that heart be uh, graced with correct motives and proper posture and ministry. Right. You don't get involved with ministry unless you're abiding in the vine because only by abiding in the vine can the vine do the work. Yeah. Jesus said, the works that I do, I'm not doing. The Father is doing. Likewise, those of you that are uh, of the one new man there, uh, the works that you're doing in the kingdom of God, Jesus is doing it. Or you're going to be in a place to where you are uh, not having proper motives in ministry. Now, you know, the Apostle Paul had uh, shared in uh, the book of uh, Philippians, the first chapter, how that there were people that were sharing the gospel uh, with bad motives. Yeah. And you know they're <laughs> they're sharing it to hurt Paul, you right. know, to hurt Paul. And you know, you know, Paul. I mean, Paul is saying, you know, whether it's pretense or in truth, you know, Christ is preached, and I'm down with that. But of course, those bad motives on there, in terms of sharing, uh, you know, with bad motives and that sort of thing, that's bad. We are to abide in the vine so that our hearts might be possessive of proper motives and ministry, period. You are not to get involved with the sharing the gospel in an area to where, you know, well, you can figure out the rest of it. All right, so now go to the next word your version so everyone stop right there so what we're going to read now is connected to what we just shared we are to do the will of the father and doing the will of the father requires abiding in the vine and obedience to the words of jesus so now i'm going to read my version this is the new american standard bible Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. 
Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Leave me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, see, I have a therefore in my book. Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, acting on Jesus' words will be a wise man who built his house on the rock. So the teachings of Jesus are foundational for us. The rock of God. Where's your version, sir? Verse 24. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be a wise man, will be like a wise man, a far-sighted, practical, and sensible man who built his house on the rock. The rock. Okay. This puts a premium on the words of Jesus, and specifically his teachings. Mm -hmm. He is saying, his teachings are kingdom of God teachings because they point to the king, okay? And so therefore, when Jesus says, on this rock of revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail. He's saying that the church is privileged to build their lives on King Jesus. You build your life on King Jesus, you're building your life on him and what he teaches us with respect to the kingdom of God. Right. So the kingdom of God then cannot be shaken at all. It can't be shaken. Zero shakeability is God's kingdom. But, you go to the next verse. And the rain fell, and the floods and torrents came, and the winds blew and slammed against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. Oh, my God. Now, <clears throat> we read this story. Some take, it, some take it literal, as a literal house being built on a rock. Some take it spiritual, personally. I take it both ways. It works in it. It works in, in in both. It works in the physical. It works. We we live in a t in a town that's the Chesapeake Bay is right down the street. You know, well, about a mile from my home. Okay, we live a, a mile away from the oceanfront or the or the Chesapeake Bay. There's people who live feet away from the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> now, could we afford a house over there? Well, maybe. But we choose not to live there. Why? It's too close to the water. You know what these people have to carry? Flood insurance. You know what we have to carry? Nothing. We're not in the flood zone. We're not even in a hundred year flood zone because of our distance from the source of all the water. Well, you mean Chesapeake Bay. Chesapeake Bay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, me, I would consider myself a wise woman because I'm not building on the sand that's at the beach. You know, every every few years, they you know they, we we have a fund where we have to <clears throat> replenish the beach. Why? Because the, just the regular water comes and washes away the sand. Yeah. yeah. So, in in that sense of the real world, I would consider myself a wise one. But it says here that. In the spiritual, 
I'm a wise woman. Why? Because I'm building my life on the rock that is Christ Jesus. Unshakable cornerstone. Yeah. Jesus is the chief cornerstone yeah. that he that the whole house is built on. I'm building my life on him. He's my <clears throat> sure foundation. Okay. Got me? All right. So this is you are like a wise man if you build on a sure foundation, naturally and spiritually. Okay. So against that uh, foundational rock there, do you see in that verse, the rains fell against it? Mm -hmm. The floods, floods fell against it? The torrents came against it? The winds blew and it slammed against it and it didn't fall. Now, this is uh, Jesus telling you that the storms of life are going to be coming against God's people. They don't get to escape the storms of life. You can imagine all the various storms that, uh, you know, can come against you and so forth. Um, just understand that the storms of life come to the people of God. Just like they come to those that are not the people of God. Yes. Otherwise, what Jesus is sharing uh, here is uh, kind of a problem. Yeah. All right. So uh, now, so go down to verse uh, uh, 26 on here. Verse 26. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish, stupid man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods and torrents came. And the winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and great and complete was its fall. All right, so everybody's going to get the storms of life. They're coming to everybody. Everybody's going to get it. And it requires the kingdom of God to stand against the storms that comes to us and that will come against us. And so our Savior is uh, putting a premium on his words, his kingdom, and him as king. Remember, he is the kingdom of God. So he shared this sermon here to give us insight into his mode of living and what the kingdom of God is about. And fundamental to that kingdom is doing the will of God with correct motives. Mm -hmm. I'm telling all, all of this, all this teaching, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, all this teaching, what, what does it remind me of? I have access. I have access to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I have, I have, I'm one with God. All this goodness he's sharing with the people that was up on this mountain is for me as well. The concept of having right motives before God is available for me. The ability to walk in the character of God is available for me. 
The right to have all of God's goodness flow to me is available to me. Why? I'm one with him. The communion reminds me I'm one with him. It reminds me that I'm seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. That's what the communion does for me. All when you when you if you understand communion, if you understand the simple act of communion, when you read the Bible, what you'll see is this is available for me. This is what Jesus gave to me. This is what God is requiring of me. And then he empowers me to do the thing he requires. I'm not really doing anything but the receiving part. That's all I'm doing. It's not my power. It's not my energy. It's not my, oh, let me think about it. Let me, oh, no. Nope. I'm just a receiver. Just like a, just like a radio. Work. That, that, that radio ain't doing no work. It just got stuff in it that says, oh, got that. I'm dialed into that to, to that signal. And I and a sound just comes out of me. I am tuned into God. He speaks, I hear, I speak what I hear. They ain't not even my own words. Open my mouth, and what does he do? He feels me. This is a good deal, people. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, 23. For I received from the Lord himself that instruction which I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, be thankful. He broke it and said, this represents my body which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. A sacrifice, a sacrifice, a sacrifice. A sacrifice is something that costs something, costs somebody something. Jesus says, this bread represents my body, which I'm not disassociating from my people. I'm not disassociating myself from my people. I'm going to take your place. When I go, it's like you go. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Take, eat ye all of it. Hallelujah. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Thank you. Saying, this cup is the new covenant, new covenant, new covenant, new covenant, new covenant. Why? Exactly. The old one was not sufficient. The old blood was not sufficient for what we needed. We needed something that would make us one with God. That's what we needed. This cup is a new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord's death until he comes again. The coming of the Lord in the heart of every believer should be so real, so alive. The communion that we just took is a symbol that he is coming back. No, you take not the communion meal in vain. <laughs> because 
that creation out there. The trees, the grass, the dog, the <laughs> cat. All of nature. All of nature was created by his holy word. That same holy word that created everything you see is the same holy word that says that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return again by fire. And we invite you to get in the ark of salvation that will bring deliverance from Judgment fire. Now, to get involved with this, the Lord God has provided salvation for you who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Lord Jesus Christ is the supreme ruler of the universe. He is asking you to acknowledge it. He's asking you to say it. He's asking you to believe it with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with your lips and your voice and your mouth, You're privileged to acknowledge the truth and be saved. Yes. So when you're ready to do this, these are the words you say. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you're the supreme ruler of the universe and that you are Lord. And that you rose from the dead, the bodily immortality. I receive you as my Lord and Savior and repent of my sin. The scripture says, I acknowledge with my mouth Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, I would be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and I'm calling. Save me, Jesus. Teach me how to live for you. And I'll live for you as you show me how. Amen. That's what you pray. And when you pray that, you believe it. You be saved from the judgment fire of the come. Mm -hmm. and, and it's coming. And it's coming. It's coming. It's Woo! Coming. Saints and friends. Wow. Wow. You know what it catches. Hastings Bible Fellowship, you can catch us on fa Facebook. Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> yes. And Instagram. On Instagram, is Hastings Bible. Subscribe. Please subscribe. So that when these come out, you know, you can get them as, when they come out. And you can stay up on what we're teaching. You can ask questions about what we're teaching. You know to pray for us. You can... Drop us a line of encouragement. You can drive us, drop us a line of discouragement. You're not going to discourage us, though. But you can drop us whatever you want. You know why? We want to hear from you. We need a word from you. I know. I know. I know. God's working on me. Uh, <laughs> but know that we love you. We care about you. We want God's absolute best for you. And all he has is good for you. Even through the storms of life. He'll be there. For he is the solid rock. You should be building your life on. Yeah. 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 The rains are going to come. The winds are going to come. The torrents are going to come to everybody. What are you built on? That's the question. What did you build your house on? And that will determine whether or not you stand or you 
fall. And great will be your fall when you fall and you build on the sand. There's no wisdom in that. Naturally or spiritually, there's no wisdom in building your house on sand. Okay? Be encouraged. Be, be all you need to be. And the only way you can do that is how? In Christ Jesus. There you go, Mr. Husband. Love you guys. Bye-bye.